And you're welcome back. Thank you for staying with us here on iBrand Daybreak. Let's bring you to the major conversation today. Uh, the Minister of Power said the recent hike in electricity tariff for Band A customers who receive electricity for 20 to 24 hours is expected to alleviate the government's subsidy expenses by approximately 50%. Speaking during the Ministerial Scorecard series in Abuja, the minister highlighted that the tariff increase is deemed necessary to redirect focus towards investing in vital sectors of the economy and facilitating liquidity for infrastructure development. And as uh, what we're going to be talking about today to have this conversation with us is Peter Shodende. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. All right. So since this tariff hike happened, uh, it has uh, raised a lot of dust across mainstream media, social media. Nigerians have so much reservations about it. Uh, and by the way, according to our research, in-house research by, by Ibrand TV, uh, we've been able to find out that a lot of people who have been told that they are in band A actually do not receive up to 20 hours power supply. Uh, a lot of persons say it is at least 12 hours to 15 hours for the people who actually see lights. Other people, whenever you see to thank the Lord. Uh, however, the minister has said that that is to, you know, re reduce or alleviate the government's subsidy expenses to at least 50 percent. Uh, with all the, a lot of other things that he said, before we get into his conversation in the, at the State House at Abuja yesterday, let's get your reaction to the new electricity tariff hike. How do you react to it? Okay, uh, Phoebe, I, I have a very mixed reaction to uh, the tariff. Uh, number one, I think it's a good policy, but coming at a very wrong time. Mm. So now I'll explain to you. Uh, the government is claiming that uh, it is subsidizing power by almost 67%. And the minister has said this uh, cost the government about almost 3 trillion naira. If you look at three trillion, uh, that's about ten percent of uh, the budget. The budget is about twenty-eight point uh, seven trillion. So, uh, in trying to free up uh, this money, because he was saying that the government spends almost ten percent on the power sector alone, what happens to other sectors? Mm -hmm. So, we need to free up uh, this money so that it can be put to productive use. Uh, that's the argu argument of the minister. Uh, good as it may look, uh, it is coming at a very wrong time. I know uh, most of the things they are trying to do is for private investors to come in. You know, we have moved power from exclusive list to concurrent. Now states can generate power, anybody can do anything. So they need to set a price that will allow uh, private sector uh, capitalist businessmen to come and play. If your price is not right, uh, people will not come into that sector. That is uh, the template of the government. Let us create the price that will allow people, even though we have moved from ex exclusive to concurrent, let's put the price that will allow private investors to come. Uh, but you now need to look at your consumers here. Uh, the, cost, uh, the customer is king. All these things you are doing, you are doing it because of the consumer. Uh, the Nigerian populace is now the consumer. And if you look at uh, the Nigerian people, uh, they, have still, they have been on the same salary for almost 10 years, even the 30,000 minimum wage. Some states are not even paying. Some are still paying 18,000 plus. Mm. Uh, and if you look at the alternative this Nigerian populace have, for this electricity increase, it is either diesel or petrol. And we are just trying to adjust to uh, the price increase in those alternatives. Now, you have not even allowed us to sing that hymn properly. We are still at the negotiation table trying to discuss what minimum wage will be like. And the next thing, you want to remove tariff on electricity. That means you just want to kill people. Trying to say to band A to affect only 15%, the argument is not logical because most companies are on band A. They want more power rather than running diesel. 
So by the time they get a 240% increase in energy cost, if they pass it on the goods, and when the goods are coming out, it doesn't come in band A, B, C, D, or E. Mm -hmm. It's just general goods and services. And before you know it, there's already inflation again. The prices of goods and services already on the increase again. That's why I said your policy is good, but it is, it is coming at a very wrong time. You will have even allowed us to maybe allow uh, Dangote Diesel to eat the market. We understand that it is coming around 1, 2, 1, 3. Mm bit by bit it to start coming down maybe to 800 if you have allowed maybe potakot refinery to come upstream so that the price of petrol can also come down people can choose between those alternatives i read this morning that same uh, transformers have started arriving you should have allowed all those things to be in place first then we cannot talk about a removal of, uh, of uh, electricity subsidy so for me good policy wrong time I appreciate your fact, especially with the way you landed. Transformers are coming in, which should even help to, you know, get power distributed to people even more, you know, beyond band A. But of course, as they have always been so hasty about putting in place policies without any proper framework to back it up. You talked about the fact that the policy is quite nice, but at a very wrong time. The Minister of um, uh, what's it called Energy, in terms of uh, power, said that the reason for the hike, especially for persons who are on ban A, is to help government be able to recover some you know, money that they will be able to use to service the debt. I live in an area where we are on ban A, and I can tell you for a fact that we don't enjoy 20 or 24 hour light. As at Sunday, to be precise, the light wind that just blew the light went off. And up till this morning, as I'm talking to you, there's no electricity. So how did they arrive at the conclusion, that's my question to you, that Ban A enjoy a minimum of 20 hour light? Okay, uh, all this categorization, uh, if you look at it uh, from the social angle, uh, they're actually wrong. In trying to classify Nigerians as either rich or poor, then the rich will benefit more light than the poor. I know very well that uh, we do not have uh, the type of megawatts of uh, power that we need to go around. In a country of over 200 million people, at least you need nothing less than 200,000 megawatts of uh, electricity for it not to blink at all, uh, for everybody to be home and dry. Uh, we battle with about 12,000 megawatts generated and distribution. In terms of distribution, we are less than three. 1,000, 5,000, 4,000. Yeah. So it will not go around. That is why they need to okay, prioritize some areas. I don't even have a problem if you say, okay, I want to prioritize manufacturing uh, and some areas that I can easily recover my cost. If you say the whole of Victoria Island is banned here now, I won't be too surprised. You have so many institutions in those places. Rather than run diesel or petrol, they will have preferred let me get constant power supply and I pay for it. So uh, we know the type of uh, discourse we have. They can only promise you, we'll give you 20, we'll give you. So all those bands are just categorization. They are just nomenclatures. It doesn't mean that they really, what you see that they say they do for them, who line and think that they do is no. Sometimes you might even plan to do 20 for your area as a big man that you have. We want to give you 20 hours, but. National, national grid collapses. So what do you say? So when the national grid collapses, so, is it not uh, spread across board? Uh, so um, just hold on. What I'm trying to say is this. These schools are just there. They are business people. Their own aim and objective is not social service. Their own aim and objective is profit. Last week, these schools combined declared a profit of one trillion. Just like George was saying, when are we going to move from this uh, tariff-driven uh, power sector to a service driven when the when he was responding to this uh, hike let us see service before you talk of price we are not seeing service we are increasing the price so i agree with you that all categories are not benefiting the way they should benefit and it is because it is left in the hands of uh, this private discourse now that it has left the uh, exclusive list to the concurrent we, ha we, ha we expect more players it was just like the days of Nitel, when everybody 
was relying on Nitel solely for their local and international calls. Nitel does anyhow. Nitel stars were like king. But immediately the government liberalized that sector and you saw private investors coming in, you saw a difference. Even when investors came in, you could see MTN Airtel trying to say no, you can't get a per second billing. Everything has to be per minute. The government looked at it again. License glue. Then you start saying that efficiency gave. They want to tell you they can't do so. Uh, what government is trying to do is to bring in all these private sector people, generate light anyhow, distribute, transmit, and let people. But you see, is this the right timing to do it? Until you get to that level where that whereby private sectors come in, all these inefficiencies you are seeing, they will still be there. Because the ones that are working currently, all these discos, tell me what has been their value addition since they bought the Dumbai Transformers. We are still using the same wires we have used all these years. So for me, their contribution is close to zero. They just came because they are business people, they are friends of the government, took over these things. And at the end of the day, most of them said they couldn't run it. Almost all your discos are, the, are in the hands of banks because they couldn't pay back their loan. So and what is the duty of a bank in managing power sector? It's not their forte. So you will get all these inefficiencies. That's why the government is trying to say, okay, let private sector come in. That's why they are trying to set a price. But we are saying that this is not the best of time to set a price. At least arrive at the minimum wage that makes sense. Let the price of alternative to these things come down. Then we can begin to have a discussion rather than do 240% increase at a go. You could do 100 this quarter, another quarter, you do another 100. You, you can stagger it. Mm. So that is what, it. What's your reaction to the issue of taxing the rich? So as to be able to provide that infrastructure rather than allow the poor to be choked with such huge hike? Uh, you see, this is not a matter of taxing the rich because the minister said, I'm only starting from these people. At the end of the day, it is going to trickle down. They have only done for 15%. To be sincere to you, we know the price we pay in Nigeria is low, it's subsidized. But is our salary also not low? Minimum wage. It is very low. So you cannot expect somebody you pay 30,000 naira to now be on a band whereby by the time he spends 5,000 to buy power, the power can only last him for one week out of four weeks. Of course, you see, everything is still going to trickle down. They are only starting with the rich. All countries all over the world they tax the rich more than the poor. That's why when you buy some type of cars, you live in some types of areas. When you go to their business districts, only the rich most times drive into the business district. Because once you enter there, you pay. Unlike here, whereby everything is anyhow. So taxing the rich for luxury is not a bad idea. It's done all over the world. But in this case, it's not a matter of taxing the rich. The government is only starting with them. Bit by bit, it will move to band B, C, D, E. And they will have a price that will allow, allow the private sector to come in and play the market. Right. All right. So you did mention, um, um, you know, so many things that should have been put in place before we start looking at the hike in electricity, like you know, um, the the things that should have served as substitutes to, you know, electricity supply. Talking about petrol, diesel. And even solar, yeah. but of course we haven't gotten to that point yet, even though it's unfortunate because the world have gone way beyond solar power supply oh, at this point. Green. Yeah, um, away from these substitutes, which happen to, or to me, which happen to be outside the, um, the power generation companies of Nigeria, NERC and whoever else they work with. In NERC, right, the discos, the Jenkos. These are the people that work in this sector. And we hear every now and then that the national grid has collapsed. We never hear when it rises up again. We only just hear when it keeps collapsing, right? These are inherent issues that have remained in this sector for years. It didn't start today. The word out there is, why didn't these people sit back? Since they, they seem to have so much idea, 
here they want to work they are doing so much fix these inherent issues like the national grid first make sure it's on its feet and is never going to fall again until maybe the rapture occurs uh, and and you know make sure that the entire country as should be as is demanded completely metered properly metered before we start looking at height you mentioned in your earlier submission People pay monies for these services and yet they do not receive the services and now you want to further take it away from these persons. Do you not think that these internal issues, you know, while waiting for all the substitutes to come into play, these other internal issues would remain even if people are able to buy petrol at 100 naira per liter today, the national grid will still fall again. A lot of people still don't have meters. A lot of people are still being uh, um, um, billed uh, 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 more than what they use or more than they deserve. How do you react to that? Okay, uh, the national grid uh, is not the job of the discos. Mm. The discos, uh, you know, the electricity value chain is divided into generation, transmission, and distribution. Generation, generation, thing companies, theirs is to generate power for you. Transmission will transmit it. I think the federal government still held that one through the transmission company of Nigeria. Then distribution at the private sector led businessmen who supply households and they buy power from the Jenkos and then sell to us. Uh, the issue of nat national greed uh, basically I think uh, is in the hands of the federal government. And we've been using same uh, national grid maybe for over 50 years. But it's signed off on this tariff hike, right? Mm, that, that, is, that is not before we get to tariff hike mm. at all. So uh, in countries that are much more developed, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't have just one national grid somewhere, maybe in Kainji, and everybody thinks so. If anything happens there, everybody's down. So Nigeria is supposed to be ripe enough. We have Mambila, we have Zungiru, even that water on Todd Mainland, some people can use it to generate uh, power. Mm -hmm. You see, it is because we have uh, lived this uh, type of uh, life, especially the military life, whereby they always want to be in control of everything. Just one command center, you can always shut down power in case any coup wants to happen. You can always do this, you can always do that. So that's why we've maintained all these type of facilities which are more rebound. So to, 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 to say you want to work on the national grid now should not be the business of the government. Let private sector come in because the inefficiencies of government will always exist. Let them be the one to generate this thing. Let them be the one to transmit. Let them be the one to distribute. We are ready to buy. It's just like saying it is still the government that is controlling and harm of uh, telecoms for MTN and, and so you don't need it. So, uh, for me, I feel very well that it is because everybody still relies on that same national grid that has been there. And the government does not have the type of funds to invest in another grid. That is why the collapse will exist. And coming to the issue of meters, of course, yes, we know that if you have about uh, 12 million uh, electricity cost, uh, customers, and almost 60% of them are an estimated billing, I hear about 5 billion or then about no meter at all, it's inefficiency. That is why uh, you could see the submission of Femi Falano saying that you cannot begin to increase prices without meeting people first, without getting it. It's against the law. He was even talking about a company that was giving 32 billion back then to buy, to produce about 5 million prepaid meters and disappeared. So uh, I think everything coming at the same time from labor, from the legal perspective, from CSOs, will make the government to sit down. And all these things you are talking about, look at them first before. You now begin to say, I want to increase tariff. It's a good policy that you want to bring uh, uh, the electricity market into a world class standard whereby they are service driven. But you see, you need to look at the people who will buy your service at the end of the day. Do they have this economic power to do so? All right. Now, in your submission, you made mention of the fact that, um, to a large extent, government generates and distributes and transmits through the TCN. And um, in also your comment, you talked about the fact that, for now, we tend to be generating from perhaps one source, 
maybe the candidate we might not have utilized other sources like the Mambila and other sources. Does it explain the excuse that the minister gave just last week when the power grid collapsed? Mm -hmm. That the cause of the collapse is as a result of the Jenkos, the discos, and of course the death that you know has been incurred by the sector. Mm, I, 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 I don't know how the minister will say collapse of the grid is, uh, is, cause, is, is as a result of discourse. Discourse, their own is distribution. They are not generation. The national grid, uh, I'm not an engineer, by what I know is where all the powers generated by the Jenkos, I think, are supplied to. Then they supply to, I don't know what type of equipment they manage there. But I know very well that that grid has been just the only one that has supplied the country for years. And you cannot be using the same things, just like a refinery, that are moribund. Most likely that grid is done at the same time the refineries were built. So if the refineries are down, what do you expect of the grid? You just keep patching, patching, patching there. I don't think, if uh, the minister is saying that, okay, the Jenkos are generating powers, the discos are not, we are transmitting, but the discos are not giving you guys, they are not buying enough. And the discos will come and tell the minister, sorry, I can't begin to buy and sell to people at subsidized price when at the end of the day that I will take a loss. Increase this price, then you will see me perform. Maybe that is where the cost of the minister is coming from. Because I don't see what uh, the business, you will even see when the discos send you message. Anytime there is no power and claim that, sorry, is it because of the collapse of the national grid or TCM, they will explain that it's not our part. It is on the part of these people so that you don't think we are the inefficient type. Maybe you are mixing the news together. The minister cannot say national grid collapse and you want to hold the coal electricity or EKJ electricity. It's not their business. Okay, so now we understand that the tariff we've been paying before now is kind of subsidized and we does not allow the discourse to function at you know, a very optimum level. But the question is, despite the amount being paid by consumers, you know, over the years, are they saying that the monies are not enough to be able to drive that sector efficiently? Or is it because, well, our minimum wage is low, so the power sector needs to be subsidized so that people can actually pay, which actually should take precedence? Okay, uh, all over the world, government once in a while comes in to subsidize power. For example, now in the United Kingdom, uh, as a result of uh, Ukraine-Russia war, uh, Ukraine is happening. So you see the UK government time and time coming and say, okay, we will subsidize power this month. Even in US, they do it. In Germany, they currently do such. It's not out of place when government sees that uh, this financial body, because in their own economies, power is key they could have very terrible weather conditions when they go into even minus. And if they don't have their eater, eater horn, a lot will die. So the government will not allow all those things to happen. But we are lucky around here. We don't have those type of adverse weather conditions. Uh, what our people are only asking for is uh, a market-driven power. You see, if the economy is okay, if the take-home pay can take us home, the minimum wage and everything is okay. I assure you, people can buy uh, power at whatever price. Uh, the problem here is that everything is coming at the same time. Everything coming at the same time. It's like the government is trying to rush everything within that four years. You can hear the minister saying that we want to start the best time is now, so that in the next two, three years, we will have had this, we will have had this. Love. You, know, you, think, you may think the best time is now, but you need to run it through. You need to fill the room. Look at the economy. If you feel the best time is now, and you are still paying 30,000 Naira, it, 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 it is a wrong time. You need to work with, or that is why you need, when these guys work in silos sometimes, that is the type of inefficiency. We are supposed to have worked with maybe Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Economic Planning. I don't know why we relegate economic planning. Because it is economic planning that can tell you that, come on, this is the situation of people in this economy. This area, you are saying somebody is category A. In that area that you call category A, there are quite a, 
you might be surprised that maybe 30 percent of the people there are poor yes everybody is mixed there's no category even category a now they are crying so it's it's uh, i think the is it largely the national is assembly is it largely dependent on the industrial area the, the the industrial no, I, don't so. I don't think so i think the discos are the ones who did their categorization themselves and uh, felt that you know there are some areas to they signed agreement with the discos and said we we are category a we don't want to be associated oh, with really? the lower people give us 24 hours we'll pay some plan like that so like in your area like you told us like that so uh the deputy speaker of the house of representatives has said it that uh, they will resume uh, plenary very soon and they are going to look into that matter they don't want to frustrate the businessmen and at the same time they do not want to frustrate nigerians so they will look at uh, a 50 50 way of resolving these issues we understand the government is trying to bring in private sectors to run it which is for efficiency purpose now look at uh, diesel we understand the iran who is importing at one two dangote is also trying to sell at one two later dangote might be like okay let me come down a little so that this guy importing will come to me so that's what the market does before you know anything will start and sell start to sell diesel at one thousand dangote also will now run a race i can't allow you to beat me to it i will also see the way dollar is coming down yeah. to now the CBN are sold at one one. Maybe next week CBN will come and say I'm selling at one thousand. Before you know anything, others will say, okay, take nine fifty. That is what the market does. At the end of the day, everybody balances each other out. So uh, the government should just take it easy on the people. Good policy, we know, but at the same time, it is a very wrong time. Mm. Okay, let's let, let's take uh, let's take in your final take, of course, uh, the implication of this new tariff hike is not looking like there is about to be a review to it they've uh, they've um they, mm. they have put it in place it's already there it's already functioning right how does this affect nigeria the, the economy the average nigerian man on the street just trying to mm. run a, a growing business what does it speak for them at this time and if you were if you were to be in an advisory space how would you advise that you handle the situation going forward I, 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 I don't think I don't think anything is impossible uh, if the government does not I, I, could, I read from Nigerian uh, Union of electricity employers that if the government does not reverse it uh, they will call their members they will go on strike Femi Falano has said we will sue this government uh, NLC saying we are warming up for the government if they don't uh, reverse the decision the national assembly is taking a look at it uh, for me i think at the end of the day we'll have a good landing because you see that tariff cannot work uh. <laughs> whether you know whichever way you look at it it cannot work because once manufacturing industries are affected of course yes all the prices of goods and services look at the full price increase now Dollar is coming down, bit by bit, sanity is taking shape. But as prices of goods and services come down, no. Though we know it will come down later, maybe by second quarter, like by third quarter of the year, things will start coming down, especially when people now import, people that have got dollars at a lower price, when they import at a lower price, they will try to draw customers to themselves by selling at lower price. Well, so the import ones, duty is remaining can, the same. Can the government do anything about import duty? No, can for import that? duty, yeah. I think, you see, uh, the reason why the government keeps looking at that and trying to manage it in and out almost every week is because, you know, the pressure on uh, the goods. CBN for dollars to import mm. was high. To dissuade people, from trying to continue to import and asking for dollars, they maintained it at a particular point in time. I think after a while, the government will have to relax on that because you see, maintaining duty at that, you can't do budget with uh, a dollar. I think the dollar, uh, the dollar estimate for budget was about 800 or 850. And now you're setting customs duty as Of course, whatever is imported, the price will go up, we know. But I think there's a reason why the government is trying. I think they're trying to control imports. They want to know genuine importers from people who just use the financial system to move money. If you are really into genuine importation and there are no so, uh, alternatives here, then come 
let us see what you want to can you pay this rate i think after a while all these ones that the government is managing using customs to manage will fizzle the way <laughs> it's, it's not sustainable all right uh thank you so much mr peters for coming on the show today we really appreciate your submissions on this matter <laughs> thanks for having me all right, I brand Daybreak, the first conversation. Hope you uh, enjoyed. And if you're streaming us on YouTube, please go ahead, tell us what your ideas are on this issue in the comment section. We'd like to hear all about it. Do not go anywhere. When we return, we will be looking at other issues. Do stay with us.